Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with another story time video. As you guys loved my story time video last time so much, I thought, why don't I actually start doing these? As I mentioned to you in that video, my life is just one big drama. There's always some sort of drama happening. I somehow get sucked into other people's dramas. I'll be walking down the street and all of a sudden I'm involved in a drama somehow. My mum thinks I'm cursed. <laughs> She's like, why is it always you? Why is it always you? And I'm like, what do you want me to do? Anyway, so as you have seen from the title of the video, I got someone thrown in prison. And let me just tell you something, they deserved it. This is what happened, right? It was, and forgive me if I'm a little bit hazy because this actually happened, I think it was September, October time last year. I was fast asleep. It was like one, two o'clock in the morning. And as a lot of you guys know, in the UK last summer, we had a huge heat wave, like no rain, a solid sun, more hot each day for at least six weeks. And when it was September, it was still quite warm. So everybody pretty much has been sleeping with their windows open in the UK, especially if, it, if you live in an old Victorian house or an old council house or whatever it is, we don't have AC. There's no need for AC in the UK. What's the point? So we can use it one day a year. It's not the same as it is in like Canada and America where you have proper seasons. I mean, obviously climate change, pff, Let's be honest, as I filmed this video, it's been snowing in Vegas and it's 17 degrees in London today. So I had been sleeping with my window open every night. My window's quite big and also my bed is quite near my window as well so that the wind can nicely blow on me as I sleep. Now, I don't know, I was in a deep sleep and it was a weekday as well. So I had work the next day. I don't know what it was, but something woke me up. I just randomly just woke up. And you know when you're just like, what is it? Is someone standing over me? Is there like a gin in my room? Like, what is it? And I could hear jingling, like a jingling noise, like chains. And I was like, oh my God, I'm having a nightmare. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. So I like tossed and turned a bit and tried to kind of go back to sleep. I was kind of semi-conscious as it was anyway. And then I'm starting to drift off again. And again, I can hear like a jingling sound, like some sort of rattling. And I'm like, what the hell is that? It's coming from outside. I also, because I don't live far from the local high street, I live really close to a police station. If the police were stick on their siren, it would literally take them at their speed I'd say under two minutes to get to my house. That's how close I am to the police station, by car that is. So anyway, I wear contact lenses, so obviously I didn't have my lenses in and I'm all a bit dreary and a bit like, like you know that weird feeling when you're like dozy. And I've put on my glasses and I stumble over to my window and then I'm looking out and I'm looking around and I'm still, by the way, semi-conscious. I'm not completely, like my eyes are a bit blurry as well. So I'm looking around outside and I can see mo a lot of my road because the road that I live on is a very long road and it goes uphill and I live kind of towards the top of the hill. Anyway, so I'm looking around and I'm looking left to right, left to right, can't see anything, can't hear anything. And I'm like, okay, I'm clearly just dreaming or something. Just as I'm about to take a step back from my window, something catches my eye, something moved. Where was I not looking? I was not looking down because I'm looking left and right down the street. I didn't look at my own home, my own property. So I look down, we have a driveway outside our house and there is a wall that goes halfway across the driveway and I see that there's somebody sitting there and their back is hunched over. I can make out that it is a male figure and he had a hood over his head and the jingling noise was coming from whatever he was doing in front of him because he was clearly he was hunched over concentrating on something. And again, I, I mean, I've seen it in the past. I've seen a drunk bloke sitting outside my house drinking his can of Stella. I don't think anything of it. I'm like, you know, the time, or somebody sat down for a second because it's an old person and they need to take a few minutes to catch their breath or whatever. So I, again, I didn't think anything of it. I thought he's probably looking through his bag for something, you know, whatever, no big deal. As I am again about to move away, he gets up. My sister-in-law's car is in front of him and he grabs the handle of her door and pulls it to see if it's open straight away in my big mouth. I, what the bleep do you think you're doing? And let me just say, by the way, as I'm very aware nowadays that a lot of my friends and my cousins watch my videos with their children. This is a family friendly channel, so I have to watch my language, despite the fact that I am a prolific swearer in real life. On here, there ain't none of that. So I will bleep, I will bleep when I need to bleep. So anyway, he's like, like where's that noise coming from? I was like, oi. Get your hands off my car. He just turns around and he goes, shut up, you bleep, bleep, bleep. 
the language, yeah? The language turned the air blue, swearing at me. I said, get your hands off my car. It wasn't my car, but still. Get your hands off my car or I'm gonna call the police. So I was like, go on then, go on then. You think you're so big, you think... And just as I was about to start swearing again, I was like, let me just stop now. Let me just stop. Let me just watch him. So he gets up, takes his bag of whatever it is, takes his bag, and he just arrogantly just saunters away like nothing. Like somebody has, like he actually didn't think that I was going to go through with my threat. He's probably heard this so much. And to, the thing is, it was about two o'clock in the morning and I do have a fairly busy road. So it was really brave of him to be going around checking people's cars. Now, all I had seen at this point was him just check my sister-in-law's car. He walks down the road and then I see him do it again to another two, three cars. Then I hear a car alarm going off. So he's clearly not taking me seriously. And he's just taking his time going down the road, checking to see whose cars are open so that he can go and steal whatever is inside. Straight away, 999, hello, police. Yep, there is a man walking down the road. I saw him trying to break into my sister-in-law's car and he's going down the street trying to see what who else's car he can break into. Can you describe him? And I was like, it's a man. What colour is he? That's always the first thing they bloody ask. What colour? I was like, I honestly can't tell. He had a hood over his head. He's wearing grey tracksuit bottoms. He's wearing a grey hoodie. He had his hood pulled over his head. It is dark outside. I cannot tell what colour he is. But he is, I would guess and say, 20s, about six foot tall, stocky built, well built, you know, fit. And he doesn't believe that I was going to call the police. So you'll probably be able to catch him as he's taking his time going down the street. That was it. That was the last I heard of it. I didn't think anything of it. My community service is done for today. My neighborhood watch is done for today. It's two o'clock in the friggin' morning. At this point, it was 2.30. I need to go to bed. I've got work tomorrow. So I get into bed, get all nice and comfortable. Just as I start dozing off, I can hear eh, eh, eh. And I know what that noise is. If you, live, if you live in London, you've heard this noise many times. It's the police helicopter. And I was like, nah, can't be. So I look outside and I see the police helicopter circling where I live, circling my road. I see a police car come speeding down my road, does a massive 360 and speeds back down. Then I hear the police helicopter, then I hear dogs. And I was like, Oh my God, were they really that quick? I was like, my bit is done. They may even be looking for somebody completely different. It may not be the guy that I saw. So anyway, get back into bed, get myself all nice and comfortable. I can, um, but at this point I'm half awake anyway. So I went downstairs, had a drink, came back, got back into bed, ding dong. And I was like, who the flip? At this point I'd already run into my parents' room. My mom was again, why is it always you? Why is it always you? Why is it, why do you, why does nobody else notice these things but you do at two in the morning? Why are you always involved in other people's drama, Charlena? Anyway, ding dong. So I look outside, it's a policewoman. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna get any sleep today, am I? And I call my mum down, <laughs> cause I was like, mum, can you just like kind of come with me? And um, so she's like, thank you very much for calling the police. We caught the guy. And I was like, really? She was like, yep, you know, you gave us such a good description. Not just that, what the, and then she laid out exactly how it had played out. So, so she basically just told me the whole story, what had happened. So she said, as soon as you called the police, we scrambled a car and sent it straight up your road. She goes, we saw the guy and he saw us, but we didn't do anything. We drove past him just so that he could feel like, oh, you know, they haven't spotted me or that sort of thing. She goes, we went up and we turned around and we came back at such speed that he saw that and he started to run. And she goes, as he was running, the bag that he was holding, he was, we could see him throwing things out into people's gardens. She goes, basically, that was all the stuff that he had stolen from your neighbor. I was like, what do you mean my neighbor? She goes, when you said that you saw him or you heard jingling sounds and he was doing something from his bag, she said, your neighbor, he had left his laptop in his car, his phone, his work phone, his keys, money. Who does that? The only thing in my car is tissue and gum. He left all this stuff in plain view and that jingling sound that woke you up first was him smashing the window to get inside the car and steal it. She goes, could you see anything? I said, no, there's a bush blocking my view. I couldn't even see that it was my neighbor's car because what had happened was when I got back into bed and I saw the police coming back after a little while, I saw them park outside my neighbor's house and go and knock on their door. And I was like, 
maybe it's a different issue maybe maybe it's something else maybe it's completely unrelated didn't thinking anything of it she said no he had stolen a whole bunch of stuff from your neighbor's car including his wallet and everything and when he was running down the street he'd already tried to break into god knows how many other cars because there were car alarms going off all down your street he was that brazen and he had been throwing things and then he'd legged it so she goes so we called in the dog squad <laughs> um and basically the dogs cornered him and they got him and he was like, where me officer, where me officer, I ain't got nothing on me officer. She goes, we arrested him straight away. Clearly his attitude towards me was like, whatever. Like somebody who's obviously done it many times in the past. She goes, and he is being taken to the police station right now. And he's already got a hearing at the Crown Court tomorrow. I was like, not even magistrates, you know, Crown Court straight there. And she was like, I just want to thank you so much. And this, this, this. And can we call you if we need you for evidence of dead or whatever? I was like, yeah, fine, call me whenever. Anyway, so that was that. In my mind, I'm a hero. I've helped my neighborhood. I've stopped somebody who's going around stealing things from people's cars and stuff and whatever. And now he's off our streets. Anyway, so completely forgot about it got on with my life whatever whatever literally like three four days later driving i'm driving to work and i get a phone call as i'm driving i press the button on my car screen answer hello she was like no from metropolitan police just to let you know that as a result of your actions and helping us to catch this prolific offender he has now been sentenced to prison for 10 weeks and I was like, so he'll be spending Christmas and New Year's in prison. She was like, yes. Just wanted to thank you so much for your help. And um, and that was it. So I was like, wow, I've actually helped somebody go to prison. Well, he flipping deserved it. Ten weeks though, come on. If you're a prolific offender, ten weeks seems a little bit lenient, you know. But this ain't the American justice systems where you'd probably get 20 years. This is England. You normally get a slap on the wrist and community service. So that's how it happened. That is how I had somebody sent to prison and he bloody well deserved it. And hopefully he knows he's probably back on the streets now. Don't be coming down here again because Charlena sleeps with one eye open. I hope you enjoyed this story time video today and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.